we have to understand that Mr. Farrar did not look outside of religion to put his ideas together. Mm -hmm. He looked at Christianity. He might have even looked at the Hinduism. I don't know. Jainism. Who knows? But I know he looked mostly at Christianity as given in the Bible. Okay? And the Bible says of Christ Jesus, peace be upon him. Not that we follow this, but I'm giving this mm -hmm. to show what influence, perhaps influence, uh, Mr. Farrar. Our master Farrar, he was a master psychologist. He knew how to deal with people with problems and help them. Okay, so um, he, he, I said, looked at the Bible too to see what can he get from the Bible to help a people who are already in the Bible. We were in the Bible. We believed in the Bible in the church. And he found where it said, Jesus said, uh, it is said of Jesus, part me, that he took mud and he put on the blind man's eye and the blind man right away could see mud on his eyes. That's what Farad did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He put mud on our eyes. Mm -hmm. No, I think... Uh, to, to keep us from seeing what we were seeing before. Correct. And once the mud is washed off, we can see Islam, we can see the mm -hmm. Quran, we mm -hmm. can see Muhammad. No, there is uh, no question that the, the uh, either through, through the, the myth or through the methodology, yes. uh, he, methodology. he was an important p person. And, and no said, one will disagree. He asked the question. Look what Farad did. He treated all of his, all the people who would come in the yes. Temple of Islam as students. And he said, what means and method? He asked the, he asked mm -hmm. the question. What means and methods must be used mm -hmm. to solve our problems, to wake us? It's he asked plus, the question himself. Plus, according to what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, Master Farad Muhammad gave him 104 books to study. And Elijah Muhammad said to me, the best of those books was the Holy Quran. And the other 103 all contained aspects of the life of Prophet Muhammad, mm -hmm. peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. The only picture we have of Farad Muhammad is his eyes looking into the Quran. The Quran. That's true. Yes. So what was he teaching us? And lastly on that, I made a tape as a representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I taught something on the history of Jesus as he taught it. And when I came out to the house, he had my tape with red on the back of it. And he said to me, I don't want you teaching what I taught 40 years ago. I want you to teach the meaning of what I taught. Because truth was hidden inside of that, but not necessarily that. Then he said, I'm sick and tired of my ministers quoting the Bible. He said the Quran is the root of Muhammad, so study the Quran. So to me, Excellent. here was a Excellent. man that was Excellent. moving us in a direction, but he did not want, if I may humbly say this, the old world of Islam to interfere with our coming up. I agree 100% with you. And I ask myself, why didn't he want the old world of Islam to interfere with our coming up? Because from a humble heart, he taught us to love Islam. Yeah. To love our world of Islam. Yeah. To respect our world of Islam. Yeah. But he also knew that our world of Islam had deviated. And by our coming to the prophet, who was without blemish, but yet we had to come to him through those who represented him. And they didn't always represent him properly. So by keeping us from 
the old world of Islam and rearing us in this way, when we would come to the Prophet, we would come in a way that we would not allow the corruption of our world of Islam to influence our behavior. That's right. We, 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 I agree. No one would have any disagreement with you that. You shared that with me before, too. Yes. It's the second time I'm hearing this from Minister Farquhar. He shared that with me before, and I appreciate it, because I, I, I didn't hear my father say that, but I know he said it, and I really appreciate my father telling the ministers that he wanted them to not to stay in the Bible like they were. He wanted them to go to the Quran. And no. lastly on this point, there's a picture of Master Farad Muhammad reading the Quran, Elijah Muhammad sitting in a chair, and Warithuddin Muhammad with his hand on his father's shoulder mm -hmm. with the Quran in his hand. This is his assignment to preach the mm -hmm. Quran. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is our assignment whether we follow the Imam or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to make the Qur'an our study. And the more we study the Qur'an, we will see what needs correction mm -hmm. in what Master Farad Muhammad left with us. Mm -hmm. And to all of the Muslims who follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, if you remember in the lessons that Elijah Muhammad answered these questions and it said, that these are very near correct. Mm -hmm. The question is, who will correct what was very near correct and make it fully correct without disavowing those that started us on this marvelous road mm -hmm. toward Islam? No, but I don't think it's a matter of disavowal because I hear from uh, Imam Waristin also that there is acknowledgement of the, the tremendous role that uh, uh, Master Farad Muhammad played in, in, in terms of bringing uh, the Afro-American community towards Islam. So that's, unde uh, that's undeniable, uncontested. But what we were trying to sort of separate out was this whole idea, of, which is the very uh, raison d'etre of Islam, that is the unity of God. And, uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, if we have, uh, uh, you know, gotten the explanation from you that we were not dealing with Farad Muhammad as God on earth, then we are fine. We can go forward with this discussion to some I'm, other. I'm a student of the Bible also. Yes. In fact, I began studying the Bible to find out how was I to preach Islam in America. I knew if I was going to preach Islam in America, I'd be preaching to Christians, mm -hmm. and they knew the Bible, not what we were going to be giving them. So I should know also what they believe in. And, so, and right. all of imams, all of the ministers of the Army Elijah Muhammad yes. were told to be acquainted with what they believe in. Then you know how to talk to them. Yes. So what, what I'm getting at is this. I uh, uh, know that uh, Jesus Christ according to the Bible. He didn't say, I am God. Right. Never said it. He didn't even say, I'm the son of God. No. He asked one of his disciples, Peter. He said, Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter said, who right. <laughs> And Mr. Farad asked the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who do you say? And he gave the answers, and the answers we have, not from Mr. Farad about uh, who is the God, they're from my father. Mm -hmm. And he says his answers were very near correct, as you said. Yes. And he said these, he gave us student enrollment, he gave us English lessons, he gave us history, he gave us problem book. Problem book. Why problem book? He's telling us what I'm giving you is problematic. Mm -hmm. It has problems in it. Yes. 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 Uh, has problems for your destiny, for where I want you to go, to Islam, real yes. Islam. But these problems are going to make your mind work, make your brain work. Yes. So he planned for me yeah. to come yeah. to real Islam, and it worked. So I, as we sum up this part of the discussion regarding uh, the belief uh, and the connections with the Ummah at large, are we then saying that we all here believe in one God and the finality of Prophet Muhammad, uh, and, and, and that's where it ends? or That's where it ends. 
Oh, that's where it begins. That's where it begins. Let's yeah, see. it could begin there. That's, let's see. <laughs> so.